University of Illinois at Chicago is something of an undiscovered gem. It's a relatively young university. It's only about 30 years old, and it has been listed as the 11th best young university. It's actually 28,000 total students, and we have the largest medical school class in the country. The Department of Anatomy and Cell Biology at UIC has as its mission a dual one. It has both teaching for medical students and graduate students and research. And what we provide is essentially a combined approach to those in which each complements the other. In general, we like to uh, have a concentration perhaps on neurodegeneration and other aspects of neuronal function. Today we know that there are discrete microenvironments of neural stem cells in the adult brain and our goal is to be able to modulate those neural stem cells in order to be able to treat brain damage and loss of cognitive function in the brain. This is a, a highly innovative approach that has not been taken before. We're the first to suggest that um, there is a dramatic decline um, in neurogenesis um, with age and aging and that this decline underlies, at least in part, um, the loss of cognitive function. Environmental enrichment is a, a very, very simple experimental setting in which mice are allowed to explore um, a new environment, to have new experiences. Um, they can exercise on the running wheel. Um, and by providing them these stimuli that today we know have uh, major implications when it comes to brain structure and function, we're able to test um, how the environment affects brain pathology. Most recently I built a mouse which has human ApoE2, 3 or 4, E4 being the risk for Alzheimer's disease. And with this mouse we've been able to design specific measures um, that allow us to detect the earliest possible changes in connectivity in the human brain that are related, we think, to a the function of ApoE4 or the dysfunction of ApoE4. Everything we've observed in the mouse, we've been able to verify in humans. It's not easy to get E2s, E3s, and E4s and the representative samples that you need to be able to do the, that kind of validation. So I, I, think we're, I think we're really close. We think we can develop and test in our preclinical stage drugs that will be able to benefit all Alzheimer's disease patients. We'll also stop drugs that won't work once they get to the preclinical Alzheimer's disease trials. My research focus of, of my laboratory is on myelin amelination and the, the function of myelin uh, forming cells in the, in the nervous system. That includes how myelin amelination works in disease and especially in genetic leukodystrophies. One of the things that we have been working on then is to look at the axonal component of the disease. We have found a series of uh, important molecular targets that are essentially um, interesting from the point of view of the therapy. So my goal on the next 10 or 15 years is to uh, produce a therapy that can uh, give the children with this disease uh, quality of life that is uh, normal or almost normal and uh, survival, uh, life spanning, that is essentially the one that we all have so they can enjoy life as we do. Well, I'm actually very excited to be part of the scientific history at this point uh, in our knowledge because I believe in the next 10-15 years what we're going to see is a great uh, growth of this area of research that tries to understand why neurons lose their connections. We're actually going to have uh, to enhance our knowledge of how uh, these uh, neuronal connections are actually uh, being lost in these diseases. So in the end of the day, uh, a neuron is as functional as its connections are. And this is a recognition that we have been gradually shifting the paradigm on research. Uh, I'm excited to be part of the research program in the department that tries to address these major questions. What we'd like to accomplish with these research projects is by identifying the actual mechanisms that are underlying these diseases, we can start developing new and different kinds of targets, ones that we can manipulate in a way to foster the connections. So what I hope to have happen is that we will have therapeutics come out of this, and this will be for diseases that are truly devastating, such as Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, Huntington's disease, ALS, 
ones that affect millions ultimately across the country and the world.